downtown Wichita, Cheryl Nutt, R.J. Dickens, James Barfield, Phil Journey, and tonight, Dr. Nabil Siam. Now, KCTU5 presents Wichita's longest running talk program, The River City Forum. Good evening and welcome to the River City Forum. This is your host, Nabil Siam. As always, we start the show by promoting the Prospector newspaper. The Prospector weekly newspaper can be found at more than 575 different locations throughout South Central Kansas. Inside, you can read the articles written by Ron and Cheryl Nutt, as well as R.J. Dickens. Inside, you can review the KCTU5 lineup, which you will, you will find anywhere else north of 47th Street. Pick up a prospector today because if you don't get it every week, you just do not get it and you're going to miss a lot of stuff that is in the uh, paper. With that, we start the show and uh, I do have a lot of things going on tonight. Uh, and before I introduce my guests who actually are going to be talking about fire and fire prevention and causes of fire, there is a fire in my heart I want to talk about, and then we will invite the firefighters to uh, to uh, distinguish, extinguish it. Um, there is an article that was in the Wichita Eagle last Wednesday, written by a prejudiced person who knows nothing of ethics, of writing, or morals. And this guy's name is Carl Thomas, who is actually from the Los Angeles Times, and he writes sometimes for the Wichita Eagle. Uh, as a heads up, I did call the Wichita Eagle, and I did ask for a, a, a counter uh, article, at least, that the, uh, the Muslim community of Wichita expressed their opinions of that hatred uh, article that he wrote in last Wednesday's uh, newspaper. But since nothing has happened, I have decided to share with you some of his hatred remarks uh, against the American Muslims, not just American Muslims of Wichita, but American Muslims all over the United States of America. He says, and I'm going to quote, I'm not going to read those two long pages, I'm going to read some of it. He says, there is something else that must be cut off if the West hopes to defeat possibly the worst enemy it has ever faced. And when he uses the word worst enemy it has ever faced, he meant by that Islam and Muslims. While Americans worry about large number of Mexicans crossing the southern border, we should also do something about the Muslim invasion and sedition that is taught in some Islamic school. Again, I'm going to repeat that. Sedition that is taught in some Islamic school, which means, by the way, the word sedition means rebellion against the state. And this is a lie, and he's a big liar. And I challenge Carl Thomas and anyone like him if he has ever been inside an Islamic school, and he is nothing but a coward man that he writes things and he hides like a rat behind the newspaper. And also he has said that mosques in, well, a mosque means a religious building. Mosques and Islamic schools are multiplying in the West. So what? So what? You know, if you have a lot of churches, if you have a lot of synagogues, and a lot of schools or mosques, in fact, you should be proud that Muslims do have a lot of mosques, mosques in America, because I do challenge you again that if you go to communities that have mosques, we have drug-free, we have arson free, we have no problem with those communities. He also say that uh, those that teach and preach hate and sedition should be closed and their clerk arrested or deported. Well, I agree with you. Anybody that, that teaches hatred should be arrested and or deported. But you should be even equal and fair because I think the, some of the pastors and clergies we have in Wichita and we have throughout the United States of America, they do preach hatred. And I'll give you an example. One of those is the 007 Club. It's not the 700 Club anymore. Uh, he also says that the, the recent arrest in, to, uh, in Toronto, anyway, he uses the word uh, virus uh, is spreading. 
which he means by virus is spreading, he says, which means Islam is spreading. By the way, these are nothing except bias hatred. There are seven million Muslims in America. None of those Muslims in America converted through the sword. None was converted through fear. All of them have accepted Islam because they believe that is the religion that they want to practice. So you are biased and you spread nothing except hatred because you are prejudiced and you know nothing called Thomas of Islam or Muslims. You've never even been maybe with a Muslim or visited a Muslim home. Your ideas and ideology and thoughts are the true virus and you are spreading nothing Mr. Carl Thomas and the witch the eagle except venom. And he says uh, why uh, he says why admit radical Muslims and their clerks from countries where this virus has flourished. You know, it, it's amazing. Where did you come from, Carl Thomas? Where did you come from? Did you come from Africa or you came from Europe? You know Europe, what is Europe? Europe is a country that breeded crusaders. You know, they killed 70,000 Jews, Muslims, and Christians in the Holy Land. That is the breed of the crusaders. So remember where he came from. And I do call Thomas, Nabil Sion from Wichita, challenge you personally. And I speak on my behalf. Nabil Sion from Wichita, Kansas. I challenge you personally, you and Rush Limbaugh and all those conservative, narrow Christians who are prejudiced against Islam. I will challenge you and debate you on a live TV show on your own by a sta station like Fox News, okay? To debate with you about Islam as a religion and the, I the ideology of Islam, okay? And I expect that I will send you a, a videotape of this, of this challenge because you are an ignorant man. You know nothing about, about Islam. You know nothing about Muslims. All you do is you are a rat that hide behind your own writings. And I'll take a short commercial break. And I'll see you in about two minutes because we have a fire we need to ex extinguish. See you in two minutes. Bye. Good evening and welcome to the River City Forum. This is your host, Nabil Siam, and I feel a lot better, by the way. Uh, I do have here on my right, Lieutenant Patty Peterson. She's with Sedgwick County uh, Education Officer. And also I have Tim Milspa. That's correct. Uh, Milspa, and he is the Fire Marshal of Sedgwick County. I had a big fire in my chest. It was in my heart, and thank you for being here. So it's good. I want, I want to share with you a few facts here. Uh, in the past five years in Kansas, youth set fires have caused 10 deaths, 10 million in property damage, and 147 injuries. Uh, more, more than half of the arson fires have been set by juvenile. Uh, half of all children light at least one fire before the age of 13. More than half of uh, suspects arrested for the crime of arson are young teenagers or under the age of 18. This is a major concern. Yes, it is, Nabil. Um, and we need to differentiate between the arson set fires that children do and uh, what we call incendiary fires. Uh, mm -hmm. An incendiary fire is intentionally set, but there is no intent to harm anybody mm -hmm. or cause um, you know, harm to or, or defraud somebody. Uh, an arson fire is intended to uh, harm somebody or to defraud somebody of money. Uh, many of the younger children, when they set fires, their intention is not to harm anybody or to defraud anybody, but they are still an intentionally set fire. But yes, it is a problem that uh, we are trying to address through mm -hmm. different means of education, um, through teaching, going to the schools and teaching, uh, teaching adults as well, and that's kind of what this uh, fire prevention division is all about. So what, what do you think the main cause or causes, why, why those people would set fires? 
the arson fire. Why would they set it? Well, as far as arson goes, uh, arson fires are set. Uh, probably the number one cause would be uh, for profit. They they may be behind in their mortgage, or oh, I see. things such as that. Um, other causes of arson are spite, revenge, hatred, mm -hmm. um, and uh, there are numerous different causes. But number one is probably a money motive that's involved in that. So what about, uh, have, you, you've, have you dealt with, uh, I mean, you just, you just came back from Topeka? From Lawrence. From Lawrence. What, what were you guys doing there? Well, it was a public education conference. Mm -hmm. um, it, we had about 11 different states represented that came into Lawrence, about 100 attendees, mm -hmm. and we just covered different aspects of fire prevention, but we had a lot of focus on juvenile fire setting this year. So why ju 